to be showing you the fundamentals of creating a Photoshop project and how to set your settings to have the most efficient project. So let's begin. So I'll be creating a new project and um, we'll call it Fundamentals Tutorial. So if you've never used Photoshop before, um, I'm just going to run through this panel, um, the settings that are in here. and. Um, go into a bit of depth on, on what everything means. Um, so this is where you can set the width and height of uh, the dimension of your project. Um, you can set pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, picas. Um, you know, for example, you can set 10. Um, so this is where you set the, the dimensions. Um, you can have portrait or horizontal. So if you have you know 10 by 20, or you know if you have uh, 18, by 24, you can have it in a horizontal or portrait, um, but we're just gonna leave it at eight by eight. Um, you can set up your artboards, and um, this option here is for artboards. Um, artboards are essentially going to give you options um, for displaying multiple windows within one project. So kind of like you see here to the left, where there's multiple different um, boxes, you're gonna be able to have um, multiple projects within one project file. And so this is really helpful if you're, you know, you're creating a PDF project, um, some kind of portfolio project uh, with multiple pages that you, you wanna have and you wanna see side by side. Um, that's gonna be really helpful for that. Um, it's very similar to the way the Illustrator uses artboards. Um, so resolution. Um, briefly touching on resolution, um, 72 pixels per inch um, is the standard for the internet. Um, you have the options of pixels per inch and pixels per centimeter. Um, pixels per inch is, is, uh, is a standard um, that I, I would recommend using. Um, 300 pixels per inch is a very standard, safe uh, resolution for any image that you're going to be creating for the internet, um, as well as a lot of images you're going to be creating for print. Um, you can go up to 600. Um, it, there is sort of a trick you can you can do with um, pumping it up to 600 pixels per inch. Um, you said, for example, if you're for posting to Instagram and you want to have a little higher quality because you know it's going to be compressed, um, one way to kind of get around this, and it's not a full way of getting around it, but you can pump up the resolution. Um, to 600 and using the Instagram sharpening tool um, you can achieve a sharper looking appearing image um, you know retaining a bit more of quality rather than per se if you were to go in with a 72 pixel per inch image plus it's going to be compressed anyways um, because that the compression is always going to be applied to your image um, you're going to be left with a, with a less quality image. So if you can put a higher uh, resolution, uh, and not always, um, you, you can kind of trick it. Um, 300 pixels per inch is, is going to be uh, sufficient for, for all of your uh, Instagram posting and, and internet needs. Um, if you are doing print, you can go up higher, and this is where high resolutions really is important. Um, you can go to 900 pixels per inch. Um, you can go to, it's depending on the printer. Um, it's If you're going for printing, you should really understand the printer that is gonna be printing um, your image. Um, that's most important. Um, you can go up to 2400 pixels per inch. Um, however, I will say with a 2400 um, pixel per inch image, um, you're going to start to find, you know, especially if you've got, uh, you know, 100 layers, you know, you're 100 layers deep into the into a project and, and you're, you're at a 2400 resolution. Um, you're, you're at a 20, you're at 2400 pixels per inch, you're going to find your computer might start to, um, you might start to get slow, it might start to bottleneck uh, because of you know, it's going to start to hang up and, and that can be frustrating. Um, 
because that resolution is so much data going on in that project. Um, you really, unless you're pixel peeping, you really aren't going to be able to see 2400 uh, pixels per inch. Um, so 300 pixels per inch is, is a s safe standard um, that I recommend using. So color mode. Um, you have bitmap, which bitmap is essentially, uh, the best way to understand bitmap is to imagine looking at a newspaper clipping, a newspaper image with a magnifying glass. And you're going to see you have uh, dots, individual dots on the image. And essentially what that is, is a bitmap. Um, and the bitmap works essentially the same way. There is, it's allocating a either a black pixel or a white pixel. And that, uh, that black pixel or that white pixel is, um, you know, it's one bit. So it's either black or it's white. And that's going to create a, a certain look. Um, it's widely, it's mostly, a, it's an older color mode, um, but it's still widely used in, in a lot of press. Um, grayscale is going to be your standard black and white. Um, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, it's going to use a scale of grays uh, as well as black and white. Um, so anything you want to use black and white, um, grayscale is going to be your go-to. Um, RGB color is definitely going to be, for most of your projects, you're going to use RGB color. Uh, for all your internet needs, uh, internet images that you're creating, as well as a lot of print images, um, you're going to use RGB color. Um, CMYK is vastly for, mostly for printing. Um, the C stands for cyan, the M is magenta, the Y is yellow, and the K stands for black. And that represents the different um, inks that exist within a printer. Um, you know, if you're using a, a laser printer, you know, that changes. Um, you can use an RGB color mode. Um, the lab color is essentially embedding the RGB color mode and the CMYK color mode into the lab color mode. And I'll touch on this in a second. Um, but essentially what that is, is if you if you got to send it to a colorist or you, you've got to send it to the printer, and you want to make sure that the printer has the maximum amount of options um, and they're not going to be hung up with um, being stuck with an RGB color mode or a CMYK color mode. Um, you're going to want to send you know, something like lab color. Um, and ideally, you're only going to send lab color if, if it's requested. Um, I would never send lab color um, unless, unless they wanted specifically lab color. Um, because if you if you know you're you're sending a project to a printer that can handle RGB color, which is only going to be like a direct to garment style printer, um, then you know you're going to send RGB or they're going to convert it to CMYK anyways. Um, so keep that in mind when you're using lab color. But um, for the most part, you're going to always want to use RGB color. So 8-bit is going to give you a bit of a smaller file. Um, it is going to give you less data, which is going to give you less quality, um, but it's going to be a smaller file um, for more, you know, quick projects and things like that. 8-bit um, is going to do you just fine. 16-bit is going to be your standard, which you're going to want to always work in. Um, anything for the internet, from, you know, from the internet to print, 16-bit um, is going to do you more than fine. Um, 32-bit, you can uh, you, you're going to achieve the highest amount of quality, um, you know, the highest amount of density, um, as far as you know that color density um, goes. Um, but the you're gonna you're gonna run into you know um, limitations when you get inside of Photoshop as far as coloring options go and things of that nature because you're working in 32-bit. So for that reason, I always work in 16-bit. Um, the background contents, you have the options of white, black, background color, uh, transparent, um, you know, background color, you can choose your background color, transparent, custom, just choosing your background color. Um, I always choose transparent because you can always, you can always create a background color uh, inside of Photoshop once you're in there. The, um, I, I suppose if you wanted to create a quick logo and just slap it in there. Um, you could just 
start with a white background. Um, but you can always do that by creating a new layer and using the paint bucket. So the color profile. Um, before I touch the color profile, the RGB and CMYK, the, this diagram will give a brief example of the different color modes. So you have lab color mode where you can see out here there is a wide color density. Um, and then Adobe color, Adobe RGB is your color profile, um, but it's showing you this outer triangle is going to be all the colors inside of it is what Adobe RGB is going to contain. The sRGB, which is what is used in the internet um, for the most part, is what's going to be contained in this inner triangle. And then you can see here in the red is the, the CMYK color profile, uh, color mode, which is what's going to be used for printing. And you can see the, um, you know, the vast difference between the Adobe RGB color and the CMYK color. And if you're using, you know, you can see if, if CMYK has, if you're starting a project in Adobe RGB and you want, and you have to send it to a printer that, that only you can do CMYK, it's not going to be able to reproduce the same colors that are, you know, that vibrant, um, that same vibrancy that is in Adobe RGB, it won't be able to reproduce. Um, so something to keep in mind. Um, so color profiles. The color profiles, if you're in RGB, you have a lot of different options for color profiles. Um, sRGB, which is what we just looked at, is uh, the standard for the internet. Um, it's the most widely used, um, widely accepted among websites. Um, for the, for the most part, the most of the internet is sRGB. Um, you have Adobe RGB, which is this wider color density. Um, you ha I'm not going to go through all of these, but you know, Apple RGB, Apple has their own. Um, Image P3, um, you can't see it in this diagram, but Image P3 is going to extend further. Um, you know, and all these color profiles have, you know, some have more green, some have more blues, some have more reds. It depends on, you know, your look um, and what, what you're trying to achieve, what types of specs you have and requirements you have um, for, for your project. So Image P3 is going to give you the most um, amount of color density um, for, that you can have for a project. Um, you have, you know, Pro Photo RGB, you have Rec 709, Rec 2020, um, the Academy Color Encoding Specs, you know, RE Logs, so you have all different kinds of camera logs, um, Canon, Canon Cinema uh, C Log, um, you know, Fujifilm, you have a bunch of different Fujifilm looks. Um, so, you, you, you know, you've got Rec 2020. Um, depends on your project, depends on your specs, depends on your requirements. Um, that you're trying to achieve, if you're trying to achieve a look or you have requirements. Um, but for the most part, if you are wanting a high color density, high quality image um, that you want to retain that um, high quality, you're going to want to use something with a high color density. Um, and sRGB just doesn't have it, um, despite it being the most widely used. Um, for example, Image P3 or Pro Photo RGB is, is very close, um, but Image P3 is going to give you that wide, the widest color density. So if you were starting with Image P3 and you were going to upload it to a website that doesn't accept um, Image P3, it only accepts sRGB. It's gonna if it doesn't accept it, it's gonna convert it to sRGB, and you're gonna see this. You know, you're gonna go from this vibrant green, this vibrant color, to this more you know lackluster, dull, dull color, and and that can change an image. It can change your entire look. So you want to be mindful of that um, when you are working in uh, in color profiles like. Image P3. The benefit of Image P3 is when you're going to print and you, you have this wide amount of color, um, 
it's going to give you your, your printer a much higher amount of option for colors to, to pull from. And if it's a, if it's a really high-end printer, it's going to be able to have that data and it's going to output a much higher quality, much more color dense image rather than if you send it the printer an sRGB file, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, st it's stuck with that little amount of data and that's all it has to work with. And so that's kind of the benefit of using ImagePeed 3. Um, the other benefit is, is that, that that color remains in the image. Um, and uh, it's going to give it a, a higher quality um, higher quality look. Um, so pixel aspect ratio. Um, I will say also one more thing about the color profile. Image P3 is accepted on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and things like that. Um, it isn't accepted on a lot of websites that you'll you might be trying to post your images to, um, and you really just have to to post it and um, and see, or maybe you know research through their guidelines and see if if it is a color profile that's accepted. Um, a lot of the major websites, Instagram, things like that, they do accept a large um, amount of different color profiles, uh, which is cool. Um, but if you upload it and you say, hey, that, my image is, that looks totally different, it's probably because they, they only accept sRGB. Um, and that is something that you can convert, and it's very easy to do within Photoshop. So if you work in ImagePeed 3 you can save it, you know, working in a non-linear format. You can save a separate file and then convert it to sRGB. And that way you don't, you know, you, you always retain that image P3 color profile, you know, original file. And then you work off of um, separate files down the line. Um, so color uh, pixel aspect ratio. Um, square pixels is going to be what you always want to use. Um, for creating, you know, photos, um, editing photos, um, manipulating photos, designing things, um, and that sort of thing. You have NTSC, um, PAL if you're in Europe, um, all sorts of other, you know, widescreen, anamorphic. It's really if you're bringing in a video file and you want to, uh, you know, color correct or, or add something to a video file um, and that sort of thing. Um, so I, other than that, you know, square pixels for animation and designing is going to be your go-to thing. So that pretty much sums up the fundamentals of creating a new project in Photoshop. Um, you can play around with this and, and create your own process. Um, this is my process. Um, you certainly will create your own as you, as you begin to work in Photoshop. Um, but I hope that helped, and I'll see you in the next video.